<laughs> as of right now, I have no idea what I'm titling this video. I'm going to figure that out in a couple weeks from now when this another Louie goes up. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jasmine, and I run the Crochetery here on YouTube. You obviously clicked on the video. You saw the the account holder. Yeah, you know, I it's it's dumb, but I've done it since the beginning, so I feel like I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> but. As you can tell by the thumbnail and whatever I choose to make the title, I've been market prepping. And that's because I have a market today as I'm filming this. It's it's today. <laughs> it is a two-day market, so it is the first market of my year like for 2024. So I'm super excited. It's the first one I'm getting to do. It is a two-day event, so I will have time like in between the two to like make stuff like very quickly, immediately, like overnight. But I do have yarn that I'm bringing there to like make things as they sell, so hopefully I don't run out of anything. But who knows, right? It's craft show season. Who knows how busy it will be, excuse me. But I did prep some stuff. <laughs> the first thing, which I think is like the like best seller, maybe, <laughs> for at least this show, is I sold a good chunk of them that I had, was the Pokemon balls. So, these little guys. Yeah, there's... Mm. I did have two of these left over from last year. And I was trying to go for like ten of each one. So that's going to explain the amount of things that I have. But I made one, two, three, four, five. I don't have enough hands for this. Six and... Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. I thought I had an eighth one. Am I confused or am I? I might be missing one because I thought I made eight since I had two. I may have misplaced one, <laughs> but I have this many Pokemon balls. I'm going to set them back down so like I'm not holding them all. You can see some of them are slightly different and the one that is different is the one that is missing. Okay. I am missing a Pokemon ball. It's right here. Here's the eighth Pokemon ball. But as you can tell from looking between this one and this one, you can tell the obvious difference is that this black stripe is different. <laughs> and that is because during this one, I was following another Pokemon ball pattern, but I don't like how it turned out or looked, so I kind of chalked that up to the ground. And then I tried doing another Pokemon ball pattern that I saw, but I just, I didn't like that one either. It wasn't coming out to the size I wanted. It wasn't coming out to the look I wanted. And then I landed on this one, or you could say this one, or any of the other ones that I had picked up. I do know the only thing potentially wonky about it is how the button sits. I chose not to put it at the back here, which probably would have been the visually more appealing part, just so that way it wasn't like like shattered in the back now because at least this way I feel like you could like click it and it would open because it's not completely sealed shut or whatever but you can tell bonk, bonk, I made these ones but I've made this pattern I actually took my time to write this crochet pattern it's might have come out before this video it might not have come out before this video I'm not sure which way I'm ordering it I might release it prior just because of the craft shows people might ask about it and I'll be like oh well it's on my YouTube videos <laughs> So I might be putting this up before this video, but if it is not up before this video, then I did write this Pokemon Ball pattern. It is going to be available for a tutorial here on YouTube for free, of course, obviously, but it is also going to be written on Ribbler. And the reason I wrote my own one for it is because one, it's not the same as the other ones that I was trying to reference, so it's not the same pattern. But two, I also used acrylic yarn and double-stranded it, so it's made out of acrylic rather than blanket yarn because it's just more efficient economically we'll say to only have to pay three four dollars for a ball of yarn compared to paying twelve thirteen dollars for a ball of yarn just to make pokemon balls and they're not any harder like they're i'm gonna not be happy about this but they're pretty soft because they're squishy i don't overstuff them so you're not gonna get a concussion when your kids are throwing these at each other so I think that they're pretty smooth and dandy. This one's a little wonky. I kind of sewed the button upwards now that I'm looking at it. This one's a little bit wonkier than this one. But <laughs> I did time myself on making these and the video is shorter. It's not like a minute by minute video so don't worry about that. But these Pokeballs took 29 minutes each roughly. So totaling that up, that is 3 hours and 52 minutes just on Pokemon Balls. 3 hours and 52 minutes. 
there's more, there's more. <laughs> and then we'll take a little maneuver over to my bees. Now I did do two kind of eyes on these bees. I went with a more like elongated version and more of like the like happy version, the kawaii ooh. I've, I've heard several people refer to these in different ways. But I did the two different versions. It is the same bee pattern. It is from the Mary J here on YouTube. They have a free pattern for it on their YouTube account, but they also have a blog now. So I like reading the written pattern off their blog, but I think they're super cute. They're like the perfect little size. I love them. I'm realizing now that this one's got like a flat head compared to this one. I wonder what caused that. Maybe I didn't stuff this one enough. But I have these two here. And I tried doing like an even split on the eyes. So here is another tube with the same eye form and another tube with the same eye form. So in total, I have, this will sit nicer. We can stack all the bees. In total, I have six of these bees, as you can see, the bees knees. <laughs> so I've got six of these little guys, which I think they're cute. Like, I don't know, let me know if you like the like happier eyes better, if you like the like elongated eyes better. I never know, that's why I did a 50-50 split, because I figured, let me test this with her, like, while we're at the craft show. And by her, I mean my friend that sits with me. To see which one sells better, to see, like, because if people are liking this one better, then I'll just do this one. If people are liking this one better, I'll just do this one. If it's a pretty good split on buying either one, then I'll just make a pretty good split again. <laughs> but the little bees are so cute. I personally kind of like this one better. But that's kind of just my thing. But each bee took me around 25 minutes to do which is fantastic. That is such a short time to do something. Like, this took less time than the Pokemon ball did. Like, come on now. This is great. I love this pattern. <laughs> but totaling up all of the bees, it took two hours and 30 minutes for all six of these bees. That's still a lot of time. That's still a lot of time. <laughs> the only reason I didn't make more bees was because I had run out of yellow because I was only using it like half of a leftover bowl I had. But I did buy more yellow, so I will be crocheting bees as I'm sitting there. So if a bee sells, I'm going to, like, make a little bee off the, to the side. If one of them goes, we're going to start making another one. If two of them go, we're going to make another one. <laughs> That's my plan, at least. But yeah, I got six of these little bees. I think they're super cute. I like this bee pattern more than the other one that I did, personally. I know, right? Opinions <laughs> in crochet. Only because it is slightly smaller, which means I can make more of them at a cheaper cost. So it means that I basically just get to price them a little bit lower, but that's just my thing. <laughs> if you're wondering about these things, by the way, they're my bin items that I call them. I put them all in little white bins, essentially, and it's more geared towards, like, the children that are attending the craft shows because they're, like, $10, $15, so, like, they're the cheapest things at my table. I also got a slightly cheaper things. They're just keychains, so I'm not pressed about them and I only make them out of scrap yarn anyway so those are only five dollars so these are my little minis so when I say I'm more happy about this being smaller it's not like I need profit I need profit it's more I'm just like it's more efficient for me to have more of these so more children can buy them because I like the idea of little kids coming up and grabbing these but those are all the bees <laughs> we'll do a big old jump and get to my snakes which I only got to make two of because time crunch but each snake took me about an hour and 15 minutes. And I will say that this is my usual method of, like, doing crochet. Like, I there's been a huge argument between yarn over and yarn under on the Instagram that I've seen. So I was like, let me try it because I have no idea what that means. So this is the usual snake that I make. This is about their usual size. They're stretchy. So they can fit around your neck just fine. It's about the usual size that I make. And you can see... How the stitch pattern looks throughout I just like it and then on this one I started with yarn over and you can tell right where this dip is is when I started doing the yarn under and you can see how much smaller it is like compared like it, it doesn't sit right it's just smaller it's more condensed the stitches do look better but there are more holes which is concerning because there's no holes in this one like, if you look between this one and this one, there's, like, no holes in between them. And just even holding them out tail to tail, you can see how much less yarn doing this takes. 
I'm not going to ramble and ramble on about that, but I am kind of mad about that because I like my snakes in crochet and I'm kind of like sad about this because like it could have been longer and cuter to me in my, my opinion. But if you want a whole video of me doing a yarn over versus yarn under comparison like this, because this is ridiculous, I'd be more than happy to. And I would just be sad on whatever yarn I be forced to use because it's very obvious that I don't like it already. <laughs> But I got the two snakes, so each clocking me in at an hour and 50 minutes. So for the snakes, it has taken me three hours and 40 minutes. And I only made two of these. And the cost of three hours and 20, three hours and 40 minutes. I'm reading my whiteboard, by the way. That's why I'm looking down. I could have made another eight set of Pokemon balls in comparison to two of these. Eight more Pokemon balls. <laughs> Crocheting is time. It's it. It's It's time. It's time. But I only have two of these, so I'm gonna bring some snake yarn to sit there too. So if no Pokemons or uh, no Pokemons or no bees sell, then I'm just gonna sit there and I'm gonna make more snakes because I only have two of these. I do have a few from last season. I think I only have like one purple one and then like two blue ones left. So I definitely need more still. That's not good. <laughs> we got the last thing on my list, which is actually a new thing that I'm like made because. There's a story behind this, is some little jellyfish. And once again, I didn't know if people would like the long version of the eyes better or the like happy version, so I made them both. But let me get into this story first. <laughs> so when I first started crocheting, I wanted to make jellyfish because I thought they were super cute and they are super cute. But I was making like a bigger version and by bigger version, I mean bigger than this. Probably it went from tentacles here, tentacles ended here, and then the jellyfish went from here to here. So they were just much bigger in general, and I did not like that. I could not stand making the tentacles because they were so long, and there were so many of them because I was not spacing them out correctly, so there was just so many of them. So it was not fun to make a jellyfish. It took me like two hours to make a singular one, two hours to make a singular one. So I wasn't into it, so I only ever made a few select ones. Like I only had like two on hand ever. And they always sold out, and my friend was like, you need to make more, because they sell out. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> Especially since I, I like cheaping my things on a, like, cheaper side. I like cheaping my things on a cheaper I like pricing my things on a cheaper side. So I was only charging, like, 15, 20 bucks for them. And they were taking me two hours, which is not good. Not good. What, what do you think? Not good. Not good. <laughs> but I found this little mini pattern on Ribbler. And if anyone's interested, I'll, I'll, like, attach it into the comments and pin it down at the bottom because it's super cute. <laughs> and surprisingly, it only takes 30 minutes. This took me 30 minutes compared to the one that took two hours. 30 minutes! And they're such a cute little size, too, and they, like, flail around. I like them. So I made two and this, like, uh, variegated yarn. I think that's the correct word. It's, like, a blue, yellow, white, and pink. And I think it's really cute with the little eyes. So I got the two in that pink. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. <laughs> I've got two in like more neutral colors. This one's like a s'mores combo and this one's like a lighter combo. And as you can tell by the amount of tentacles between this one and this one, you can tell I made this one first. <laughs> I wasn't aware of the spacing on this one either. Notification, sorry about that. So you can tell I made way too many. Like this one has one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tentacles, which is a lot. They're kind of all just like lapping each other. You can't even really tell. Versus on this one, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So it's two down. Like there's only two less on this one. And look at how much more nice this one sits than this one. So you can see why I didn't go with as many of these like this. Also because it took longer. <laughs> and I don't like longer. I like shorter. <laughs> But they're still cute. So these two are like the little neutral ones. I'm um, gonna like the brown, the light creams. This one is a blue, white, and a green yarn, which I think is the cutest. Like personally, I love this yarn. I think it's really cute for little jellyfish because it's like what you'd envision a jellyfish color to be. I think they're really super light and pretty. And I'm hoping that they sell because they're really cute. And I might want to keep them if they do not. But I think they're really adorable. And I dropped one of them, so I guess that shows how adorable it gets to me. I have these two, which are darker blues. Come on, I grabbed the wrong one. Darker blues, so I'm not sure how well you can kind of see their eyes. 
but not really. You can't see them that well, especially not on camera. In person, they're a bit more noticeable, but on camera, you can't really see them, which kind of stinks. Like, you can kind of see, like, the outlines there and there, and then the outline there and there. But this one's more of, like, a darker, like, blue with, like, little hints of, like, a really light blue or maybe, like, a teal turquoise in the middle, which I think is pretty cool. So, again, more blues because they're jellyfish. <laughs> And then to try to even it out, because if you work at a craft table, then you hear this way too frequently. Do you have any girl colors? Or do you have any boy colors? So I made two more in quote-unquote girl colors. I made two more in purple. This one's like one of those cool twisty colors from Bernat. So I really like this one. So I wanted to try this one. This one's in purple. And then this one is one of their speckled yarns. You can see there's like little speckles here and there throughout. And this one's a deeper purple, so there's two of these purple ones. <laughs> because I already knew I was going to hear in my head internally, do you have any girl colors? I was like, I just need more. <laughs> so I have ten of these, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ten. <laughs> so I have ten of these little guys. Each one took me 30 minutes, so if you did the math on that, they took me five hours to make all ten of these. Which isn't that bad, actually. Like, ten jellyfish and ten hours. In five hours, that's really not that bad. So I'm not upset at this. And I think they all look pretty darn cute. And before I get into the little, like, conclusion outro here, I have a few honorable mentions I want to do. Honorable mentions. <laughs> because they didn't go into doing this, but I just wanted to, like, mention that I have them. <laughs> Here's a couple little leggy frogs, obviously. You know? Leggy frogs. <laughs> I actually didn't get a chance to make that many of them, so that's not good. But they are cute. They are little, and I am out of breath. I had to go run and do something real fast before I filmed the outro for this, so my breath, my lungs are not long in. <laughs> but just a couple of little honorable mentions that I have those. I also did start making dinosaurs, which I think are the cutest. Like, look at it. Look at it. It's adorable. It's standing, by the way. I'm not holding it up. It's standing like this. <laughs> Look at that. That's the cutest. It's not standing anymore. But I think it's super cute. It's from Premier Yarn. It's one of their speckle yarns. Look how cute that is. I think it's called Pom Pom, Parfait Pom Pom. It's so cute. I love it. <laughs> it's such a cute little dinosaur. But this might be the last that you hear of. The, def it's definitely not the last. Don't listen to me. <laughs> of the Genshin dolls that I've been working on. I have... I have I have three of them now, and I want to show you them. <laughs> I have three of them now. So this one's Zongli. Oh gosh, his head's slipping off. This one is Zongli. They're like a Geo Elemental. I think they look schnazzy. And then there is Farina. She is a Hydro Elemental, which is why I tried putting teardrops in her eyes, but they did not come out that well. It's a little derpy in my opinion. But I think it looks great. The hair is blocking it, but there's a whole bunch of like little layerings on her back there. And the cute little top hat, like, can I mention that? Like, that's just the cutest. And then there is Nahida, who's, like, a flower, or, like, they call it Dendro one, where they look so cute. <laughs> like, look at that. And look, it's got a little ponytail. Like, look at the little ponytail. You can hold her by it. There's a little braided section right here that I got to braid, which I think is the cutest. Like, look at that. And I put little twinkles in her eyes. <laughs> I think that's all of the cute little honorable mentions that I have though. I just wanted to show those off really quickly because I think they're really cute. I will probably make a video when I have more of the Genshin dolls of like just Genshin dolls but that's going to take a like a long hot minute so don't expect that anytime soon because they take a lot of time. They take a lot of supplies and I don't write these patterns myself. I purchased them from other people who have written the patterns and they don't have everybody out yet. I didn't time myself on the other two, but this one, for instance, took me a little over seven hours to make. For this <laughs> seven hours, that's a long, long time, but I think they're really cute. So I'm excited to see how they go. <laughs> but that's all I have for this little, like, little mini market haul. In total, all of the stuff, not the honorable mentions, so the snakes, the Pokemon balls, the jellyfish, and the bees... All in total took me 15 hours and 27 minutes to make. Which is crazy because like I do this for every market of just like setting stuff up like this. It's like the crazy realization of how long you actually spend doing something. <laughs> you just sit there for a good minute and you're like, oh, 
yeah, I did that. <laughs> so maybe I'll do this again, where if I have to remake a bunch of bin stuff, like my bees, the jellyfish, I have a couple new items that I'm adding to my bins, like frog, Pokemon Ball, stuff like that. And I run out a lot, because I have three shows this month of April alone. I have one today. I'm filming this on the 12th, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the 12th. So I have one on the 12th, the 13th, which is tomorrow, two-day show, like I said. And I have one on the 20th as well, which means by the end of these three shows, I'm going to need to restock a lot of bin stuff, in my opinion, because that's what sells the best for me. So I see a lot of restocks coming in, in my future next month. So there might be another video similar to this of me losing my mind with making... 10 jellyfish, 8 Pokemon balls, 6 bees, and snakes, several snakes. I started working on a cow, by the way. I have... It's not here. <laughs> I didn't take it out yet. It is somewhere. I started working on a cow, and I only got, like, the leg done. I got the arms and the leg done, so they're definitely not done. <laughs> but fingers crossed I can finish that, because it's not until the afternoon, so I'm hoping to finish that and then work on snakes until I get to the show itself. So wish me luck, because I'm going to need it. This is going to go up most definitely after the craft show, though. So maybe, like, I'll stitch it again and do, like, a little update on how the show went. But I don't think I probably will. I'll probably just put a comment down below, if, like, stating if I did good or not. And telling you how much of the stuff is sold. So for now, goodbye.